Hello everyone, it's mermaid time again, and what am I going to do about it? I am going to draw a crap ton of mermaids and hope that I end up with 31 of them at the end. So what are my plans for this year's mermaid challenge? Well, I'm not following a prompts list. Go figure. I am going to be drawing all of my mermaids digitally this year instead of traditionally. That is a first for me. And my plan is to turn all of these mermaid designs into sticker packs or pins or something like that at the end. I may pick a few of the best liked designs and turn them into enamel pins or custom printed fabric or something crazy that I've never tried before. My idea for this year is not an original one, it's actually the same idea I had for my first mermaid two years ago, and that is to design or model each mermaid after a fish or marine animal. I have a list of 40 or so fish and such to draw inspiration from, but if there is a specific marine animal that you would like to see as a mermaid, let me know in the comments. I always welcome suggestions. Today's mermaid is based on a narwhal. I did an Arwal Mermaid the last time I did this challenge and I loved her so much that I decided to redesign her for this year. I feel like I have improved a lot since I started doing this challenge back in 2018. I have definitely gotten better at digital art. I would not have even attempted this challenge digitally back then. It's really only in the last year that my digital art skills have even come into existence. But let's talk about the piece. I'll start from the beginning and tell you how I prepared for Mermaid. Uh, what I did was I drew out 31 rough thumbnail poses so that when I went to draw my daily mermaids, I wouldn't have to sit there for hours trying to come up with a pose. That's probably what takes me the longest when it comes to designing a character is the pose. It's important and I am not great at it. Thumbnails help me so much because I can really see the flow of a piece and the line of action without having to waste an hour drawing everything to scale and then finding that the pose is stiff. I definitely recommend drawing thumbnails for everything. It also helps a great deal to create a shape that you want your drawing to inhabit. And what I mean by that is, what do I mean by that? Uh, it's you want the composition of your piece to have a shape to it. Uh, this mermaid, for example, is a circle. She exists and is posed in a circular shape. She has a lot of curved, rounded, circular lines, and the overall shape language is that of a circle. I hope that makes sense. If I don't give them a line of action or shape or some of some kind, their limbs t and any extremities like fins and tails tend to just stick out awkwardly at whatever angle my pencil decides. And shapes are usually meant to visually convey personality traits or character types. Circles are soft and you usually see them associated with kind, warm, friendly characters or shy, quiet, delicate characters. I didn't set out with intentions to make any specific type of personality for her, but obviously my subconscious had ideas of its own and was like, yeah, she's the shy and pensive type. And I was like, okay, round it is. That's what happens when you do a lot of research into character design. It seeps into the cracks of your subconscious and makes you do things without even realizing it. And this sounds like a sci-fi horror novel. Did you just hear those two pops? That was, that was my wrist. Why does it do that? Literally all of my joints pop. I'm like a Rice Krispie. Ugh, that was more personal knowledge about myself than you needed to know. Anyways, back to this thing that I'm doing. Let me talk about uh, the program brushes and tablet that I'm using before you click away from the video because of my terrible attempts at comedy. I am drawing on my iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil using the program Procreate. This is my favorite digital art program that I have ever used. It is great for digital artists who want to focus on illustration. It almost feels like drawing in a sketchbook. Not sponsored, just love it. I have to admit, I do have a limited experience with digital art programs, but this program is pretty sweet. I also like that in this program you can create your own brushes or download brushes from other artists who have created their own. 
but I am just using the brushes that came with the program. I'm using the 6B pencil for the line art and later on I'm going to be using the Flix spray paint brush and a modified version of the 6B pencil that I made myself. I basically just copied the brush, went into the brush dynamics and noodled around with it till I was happy. I honestly cannot even remember what I did. Oh, and here is a neat trick with the color fill. Uh, what I do is I create just an outline of what I want filled in with whatever brush I want the outside of the texture to be. Then I select the outside of what I have painted, create a layer above it, fill that layer with that selection, and then merge the two layers together. Don't know if any of that made sense. I'm probably just gonna have to do a separate video talking about how I use Procreate and write myself a good script because I have a script and I'm just kinda winging it off of the script right now. Oh, and here is where I'm using that uh, modified 6B pencil brush. If you can't tell, what I have done here is I have created clipping masks above that main body color so that I can put the textures, each texture on its own layer. So I can modify that texture, erase it, do whatever I need to with it without affecting any of those texture layers underneath. I really don't know too much else to say, at least in this segment. When we get to the shading and highlights, I might can add some more insight. Um, oh, well, you can see that I pull up reference photos. Definitely use reference photos. I don't care what the internet tells you. It's not wrong to use reference photos. I mean, if you're just directly copy and pasting something, um, then that might be an issue. But reference photos are not evil. Reference photos are your friend. I really want to do a video about reference photos and how to use them, but I don't know if that's something that y'all would be interested in. Let me know if it is. I have opinions and maybe some helpful information, but definitely opinions. And maybe I can help clear up some confusion and misinformation out there about how, when, and why to use reference photos. What I'm doing here is coloring my line art. I use a clipping mask layer to do this. I start off with a really dark brown color for my line art. I don't often use black because it usually looks too harsh against lighter colors. Now if the dark brown looks too dark, then I will create a clipping mask and color in any line art that I feel needs to be lightened. Now, I want to have clipping masks for the shadows and highlights, but I don't want to merge all my layers in order to do that because I am an anxiety riddled artist and I always think, what if I've missed something and I want to go back and fix it? Psh, I never do that, but I want the option. So once I get everything done that I want to get done, I will take away the background so that the only thing visible is my mermaid and I will hit the copy canvas option. This copies everything that is visible and then I will just paste that on top of all my other layers and create clipping masks on that layer to add my shadows and highlights. Well, the piece is almost done so I should probably wrap up my voiceover. I hope you like my narwhal mermaid. I am super pleased with her. She might end up being my favorite mermaid this year, but she's only the second one I've done, so I might be jumping the gun on that one. Are there any sea creatures that you would like to see turned into a mermaid? I'm going to try to not have too many repeats from my list of 2018, but there are some like this narwhal that I just really can't resist doing again. Also let me know what you think these mermaids should be turned into at the end of mermaid. Should they be stickers, pins, enamel pins, prints? What do you think? All of the above? This is probably the only mermaid video this year that I am going to be going into so much detail about how I went about drawing them, but that's going to be a good thing because this year I'm going to try to get all of my mermaids on YouTube. 
I'll probably do time lapses of the mermaid sketches every day so I can turn them into videos every week for y'all. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and check out my links in the description to my other social media where I will also be posting my mermaids. As always, have a great day. Bye.